Right. Whoa. You made it through the queue. I hope it wasn't too cold. Um, good morning, bonjour, uh, morgen, good morning, buongiorno. All of the, all of the languages. I am <coughs> a VP at Gartner. My name, as you can see, is Italian, but <coughs> my wife is Irish, so I live in Dublin. Um, one of my boys was born in, in London. Um, the other boy was born in Edinburgh. Um, my brother lives in the US. Uh, I have cousins here in Paris, actually. And so when people ask me about international trends, I say, come to my kitchen. And there are particular times that are very quiet in the kitchen. And there are times where things get pretty sticky, like, I don't know, Ireland versus Italy in rugby. Um, I work for Gartner, so we give advice to people who use technology, and we give advice to companies that produce technology. And we are there in the middle. I've been doing this job 20 years, which is great, because it gets me out of bed every morning. Um, it's also great for you because my company, when, you know, we to some extent predict trends of the future. And when we get it wrong, our company fires us. So being around 20 years is a good guarantee that sometimes I get things right. Now, uh, fascinating talk. Fascinating talk by Tariq. Uh, I am going to take some of those points into my, my present. I am Mr. API in Gartner. I write all things API, all things API come from my desk. There's about 80 colleagues who form a community of research, which I chair. Um, and it's a, it's a bit amusing because of conferences sometimes. People meet me in the morning and they say, good morning, Mr. API. And it makes that caption a bit obsolete. Anyway, I am going to talk to you about APIs, obviously. It's going to be much more API specific because you know the old saying, if you only have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. OK? Uh, but I'm talking about change as well. Now, I have a full, there, there's still a few seats here in the middle if you bother standing on some, some other people's feet and getting to them. But um, I wonder if I can have a show of hands. How many of you are independent programmers? So you program on top of somebody else's APIs. Hey, hold on. This is API days. Don't be shy. I don't have a book. I don't want to give you a book at the end, okay? <laughs> okay. So how many of you are in a steady job in a conventional company and use either your company's APIs or somebody else's APIs? Ooh, many more. Many more. Um, well, this is what your bosses are telling me, that there is a lot of change. Actually, they expect change. They want change. Now, I saw that there was a picture before of Elon Musk who runs Tesla, and uh, Steve Bannon. I can't qualify him, OK? Um, <laughs> there is no doubt a lot of change is going to come from them. Do you trust them? Because a lot of change will come from you in this, in this room. I envy you for two reasons. First of all, because I'm old and you're young. 
okay? Because I did my first program in assembler in 1966, okay? The second reason why I envy you, which is the real reason, is because a lot of change comes actually from you, okay? The changes we will see in, the, in this industry and in the world in the next few years will come from people who either provide or use APIs. And a lot of you in this room are in that position, okay? And, you know, I won't go through the details of this. You know, I think we will give you the slides anyway. Now, how many of you have been in hackathons recently? Right. Well, there's a few of you. Um, how many of you who have been in hackathons actually thought that that hackathon wasn't organized properly? <laughs> it's about half of the people who have been in hackathons. And everybody else in the room should understand that hackathons will be a main way of driving change, okay? And companies will use hackathons more and more to find innovation. Companies who want to innovate but really don't want to take the risks of doing so, so really they don't want to innovate, okay? We'll run hackathons to harvest the idea from you, okay? Now, is, is the API economy has been around for a while, from the first mashup in, what it was, 2007? You know, the guy who mashed up uh, Google Maps uh, APIs, well, there were web services at that stage, with uh, a website of an estate agent because he was looking for a house and he was sick of going from the website of the estate agents to the website of the maps. That was roughly 12 years ago. The API economy has been evolving uh, since then quite considerably. Um, it is all based on the fact that you have a place, a company, a government institution that says, I've got good data, or I've got a function that I want somebody else okay, to use. So they publish these APIs to developers. The developers got ideas, and they say, well, we might make up this app. And I say, don't get me wrong, I mean, uh, an app can be anything, at least in this slide. It can be an app on a smartphone, obviously. It can be a web page. Um, it can be a conversation with a chatbot. It can be, I don't know, a question you ask to Siri or any personal assistant. So that's an app for me. And then if this app has value for the user of the app and has value for the provider of the API, bingo, it works, right? There has to be value for both. Because if there is only value for the app users and no value for the API provider, the API provider will say, well, that doesn't really do anything for my business, so why should I put up the whole infrastructure and keep it going? If there is only value for the provider, the app users will say, what's this? I don't need that the whole thing falls apart. So there has to be value for both. You are, as developers, are the main vehicle of that. Now, how many of you provide or belong to companies who provide APIs? It's quite a lot of you, okay? Okay, I'll do some good examples for you. When I say developers, there is a confusion. There are the developers that actually use the APIs, the one that you can see in the upper left corner, 
And there are the developers that actually provide the APIs. In some cases, especially in corporates, the same developers provide the API and use it, which is a bit cheating, right? Because you do the APIs that you need. The whole principle here is that you should provide APIs for consumers. And this is what I mean, OK? Say you are in, I don't know, a telecommunication company. And your company has gone off the tangent, like many. And they say, oh, now we're going to become digital, right? By the way, when boards, management boards of companies say we want to become digital, they don't know what they mean. <laughs> they don't. You know, they probably heard this. Somebody's making money on it, so why shouldn't we? OK? And then people say, OK, fine, so what do we do? How is my day different if I get out of the bed in the morning and I have to go digital? <laughs> OK. So this whole thing of becoming digital gets typically down the hierarchy through the CIOs, generally, to you. OK? And this thing of becoming digital is a business strategy. It's not a technology strategy. I have a lot of our clients that come to me and say, OK, Paolo, um, <clears throat> just tell me which APIs I should do. How do I know? You know, how do I know what are your business challenges? Please tell me. OK. Um, where do you want to go with digital? Tell me. Then I will know which APIs you need. Now, look at that. Every digital strategy is based on the fact that people understand there is a business moment okay, where they're not, and they should be. Okay? A specific moment in somebody's life where they can make money, and they're not there yet. And they can be there with some sort of digital concoction, okay? Which could be a mixture of a smartphone, uh, IoTs. The feast of IoT is the connected car, right? Whoa, we get two gigabytes of data every second. Wow, you know, it's a feast of stuff to make money on. And the telco that transports that data say, oh, that data is mine. It goes through me. I can use it, right? The driver says, listen, I'm driving, OK? That's my data, especially if you're German or Dutch, OK? And the insurance that sees your driving style and has to give you a better premium next year says, OK, I get that data, I use it. You crash the car, the airbag, fire, the airbag fires, your phone calls an ambulance. Which ambulance? What health cover do you have? Which ambulance it comes for free for you? Which ambulance somebody else wants to make money on? OK? So all of these scenarios are digital moments. OK? And in that case, is an application that might run on a car coupled with a smartphone, OK? Now, OK, so my interaction is that I have a car crash. I have to decide what to do next. Is the driver responsive? If it's not, and the airbag fired, and the decrease in the deceleration of the car was sharp, I better do something, OK? These are all APIs, all APIs. I have to check the health uh, insurance, OK? And these are pretty difficult APIs. You know, They go down there in the weeds, in, in, in the blue layer, where COBOL systems were, OK? Anybody here? I can see a few people smiling with gray hair or no hair. Um, 
So I gather that you tried to cut an API out of a COBOL pro program, okay? By the way, when I started, there was no COBOL yet. It was just coming out, which tells you, you know, how old I am. Um, so which APIs depend on which interaction up there you want to enable? APIs are servants. They have to serve a consumer, okay? Let's face it, okay? So if you're a provider of APIs, you have to serve a set of consumers, a mob of unruly princes, if you ask me, okay? However, if you develop on top of the API, you're the second type of developers. Hey, you can tell people what you need and they have to give it to you. Okay, the APIs are very, very, that's, and, and to find out which APIs are good, that's where you start. You start from the consumer of the API. You don't start from all the mess that you have in your platforms and it's going to stay there for another 50 years until you retire. Now, megatrends. I've talked a little bit about digital transformation. They are raging. Everybody has gone off the tangent for it, okay? But as I said, nobody really knows what to do with them. Open banking is huge. There are regulations here in Europe that force banks to publish APIs, at least for payment systems. And if you are in the UK, and apologies, welcome to Europe, uh, but <laughs> if you are in the UK, we don't know what's going to happen with you guys, so we don't know, okay? But anyway, I live in Ireland, by the way, okay? So it's even worse for me. Uh, but in the UK, the regulations are even wider, okay? It's not only about payments. It's about opening and closing accounts. It's about transferring direct debits, okay? So that's the platform, okay? And everybody needs payments, no matter what you do. You've got to pay for it. I'm afraid that's life, okay? So even if you are in the sort of most distant vertical from financial services, you probably have to use financial services APIs, which gets then into the problem that open banking APIs today are not very good, okay? Sorry, I'm a Ghana analyst. I see things and I tell them with the way I see them. Apologies for the ones of you who work in banking. But really, oh, we are the biggest bank in, put your own country there. So everybody will work with our own APIs. Even if they relate to the Gosh, I'm trying to find a, a polite word for it. Even if they relate to the most, oh God, that's, that's really, really tough. Even if they relate to the most complicated, okay, fine, that's the one that came out. The most complicated data model of the world. And we just throw that in your face. And because we are the best bank, you have to struggle with that. <laughs> Actually, that's not enough. You have to pay to do that. How can this work? How can this work? We have banks that have good API layers out there, actually with reasonable data models, but still charge for their APIs. You know, if I'm an independent programmer like some of you, you know, I won't go with the APIs that I have to pay for. I will go with the APIs that I don't have to pay for. And I will actually work with the APIs that for me is easiest to work. You know, not the ones that have the most difficult terms and conditions. And another new thing, everybody talks about AI today, artificial intelligence. My problem is that a lot of the artificial intelligence today it's not intelligent at all. There are pockets where things reasonably work, like voice recognition. 
if you talk in English, that is. Try the Czech one, okay? So there are pockets where things kind of work. The problem with artificial intelligence today is that it has no morals. I remember three years ago, I stood up in a presentation like this, and I fired up Siri. And I said, Siri, I want to rob a bank. And Siri said, oh, the nearest bank is, you know. <laughs> so that is the issue with artificial intelligence APIs. So, and it will take some time, okay, for this one to be, I think Apple fixed it by now because they're probably sick of me going around and making the joke. But, uh, so, uh, this needs to be fixed, but it's good to experiment with them. And it's good, you know, imagine this. You have the most unuseful corporate application for CRM that your company has worked for, for is worked at for like you know 20 years and it really doesn't do the job and you really want to go out and get Salesforce and some people do as if that fixed it but anyway uh, so and and you know you're there and you have to use this application wouldn't you love have some API added to it that made it look clever that's what artificial intelligence APIs do they can recognize a shape. They can describe a picture. They can even translate in somewhat intelligent way. Again, for main languages, okay? Behind all this, though, to me, the main drivers are privacy and culture. They are related. They are related. But it, they change so much country by country. Like, I was talking to a client in Germany the other day. I pick on Germans a bit. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. But, you know, I'm half Swiss. Okay. So there's a bit of you in me as well. Okay. It's a yin and yang. Um, so, um, and I said, look, you know, in the US, when people want to use a good account consolidation app, I don't know. So an app that lets you see basically a balance of your accounts in different banks, right? Well, they can use Mint, they can use Stripe, and they actually give Mint and Stripe their bank credentials. And the kind, most of the people, most of my clients say, are you out of your mind? You don't give your bank credentials away because it's a license to kill, right? Now, the culture in the U.S. is that giving your bank credentials away to a provider on the phone actually gets you a lot of convenience, and people are happy to do that. Not here. Not here. Okay? And that's what I mean as a mega trend. You will have to respect um, these perceptions around the world. Now, APIs are not everything, okay? Yes, of course. Here's my booking reference. Just return my flight details. Ah, fine, that's an API that everybody has, right? But hold on. The time has come. I need to check in. You need to send me a notification that I have to check in. That's not an API. That's an event that comes through at a certain point in time and has a lot of transactions associated to that. Okay? That's what event processing is. When I was six and I did my first assembler program, I could call a subroutine. You could call, I mean, you could stretch and call that an API, 1966. Event handlers came much later, and they're not taught that much in universities. Everybody calls you, everybody talks about APIs, nobody talks about event handlers. So, but everything, everything, every single human activity is a sequence of APIs, request, 
reply, and events. Event true, do this list of things, okay? Microservices are very, very helpful because you can uh, coordinate them and you can use them with a mix of APIs. I won't go through the detail of that. I'm here all day, so if somebody wants to spare, to spend very, very boring 20 minutes, you can come and talk to me about it, okay? But, you know, APIs are not everything, and you need more, or as they say in English, horses for courses. Um, but it, ultimately, you know, and this is an example of what you can do with APIs. Oh, a lot of CIOs, CXOs come to me and say, um, Paolo, this thing of APIs, it's just technology, right? And I said, no, no. If you just consider APIs as technologies, you're buying a Ferrari to go and get the paper in the news agent around the corner. Okay? Think about what APIs can do for you. You just can't buy a car and leave it there. That was my uncle, by the way. Okay? He's rich. I'm not. I'm just famous. Uh, so, uh, you know, he, he like, if you have APIs, think about, you've got a car, think about where you can go with the car. Think about the journey that you can make. Think about all the places that journey can touch. Think about the people you can get in the car and go there with. Think about all the nice things that you can put in the boot, and then when you get there, you know, you take them out of your suitcase and you use them. You know, that's what APIs do. Okay, a lot of even companies focus purely on API design. They get on the lower, sorry, they get on the left side of this picture, and then here's an API, right? Good luck. That's not the end of the journey. That's the beginning of the journey. Now, this looks very waterfally, okay? And it's not, because there are a lot of recycles there, especially for APIs. I defined this concept called full lifecycle API management a long time ago, um, because it helps me to rate technology providers. Um, there is no way up there you can read the names, can you? Some people with very sharp eyes might. Um, anyway, that's what we do in Gartner. We rate platforms for doing specific things. And the thing here is API management. Basically, it's everything from the moment your API is born, or even before it's born, the moment you decide to do one, to the moment you retire it. Okay? with all the recycles, like my previous slide. And, you know, that's our assessment. Ulu does it well, upper right corner. Everybody wants to be there, okay? Um, and people who do it less well. Uh, you will see some of these people are around here. I saw their boots around, said hello. Uh, Magic Quadrant are not popularity contests, okay? especially for people like me who have to publish them. Um, but um, there is one thing happening in this space. Everybody likes API management, software or cloud services, especially big boys with big and long and deep pockets. So acquisitions are swarming. They happen all the time. I have seven leaders in this quadrant. Four of them either are being acquired now or have recently been acquired in the last three months or are acquiring, okay? It puts a lot of instability in the market of the providers of API management, okay? Um, and API management goes well with everything, you know, cloud services, integration, um, mobile platforms, okay, platforms for digital business. It goes well with all of this. 
It's like parsley in Italian cooking, you know. Whenever you do an Italian dish, you put some parsley on top. It always fits well, okay? And API management is a bit like that. Now, I thought I would pay tribute to France with the picture that you see in the upper right corner. Uh, some of you might recognize the man. His name is Philippe Petit. Um, in 1974, um, while the Twin Towers in uh, New York were being built, this man managed to smuggle a wire on top of one of them, pull a wire overnight between the two of them, and in the morning, he walked back and forth eight times from one building to the other. There was the police on both, okay? They made a movie out of this, fascinating. And when he was asked, why did you do that? Because it took him years to prepare this. And he said, because that's what I always wanted to do. Okay? That is my description of the role of the API product manager. Okay? <laughs> and if some of you have that role in this room, congratulations or commiserations. But, uh, you know, you're constantly caught between the people who cut the APIs in the platform and the people who want to use the APIs. And these guys are going to tell you, oh, I need desperately an API that does this. And these people down in your system say, oh, yeah, it's going to take you two years. Okay? And they are constantly caught in between. Now, there are several other roles. I may be, you know, alluded to some of them. But this is a central one in running API programs. Now, everybody wants me to finish, so I will. Okay. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. Now, honestly, you know, you have the power for change. Okay, you, because a lot of the change will come from you developing on top of the API or developing from the API on, okay? You have that power. And the bad news for me is that I'm getting old and there's no sign of me retiring uh, because this is too exciting, okay? Um, the good news for you is that it's going to be a hell of a ride. So welcome to the change and maybe the programming force with you.